Hey everybody, Saigon Cat here with the weekly Questers Rest channel update vlog thing. Hope everybody's having a good morning. I um I was smart this time and I actually I made notes about what I'm supposed to talk about. And the hat is probably a dead giveaway to one of them. I don't know how many of you are SNK fans. I know a couple of you are. Uh Doc King, I know I know you are. Um <clears throat> KOF Destiny started. <laughs> For those not familiar with uh, SNK or the SNK fighters, probably their biggest and best well known is the King of Fighters. Uh, the King of Fighters started as an offshoot of the Fatal Fury and Art of Fighting series as kind of a um, in house mashup. 2D fighter, in the same way that there's been stuff like Marvel vs. Capcom, which is, you know, Marvel characters and Capcom characters, the King of Fighters franchise brought together a bunch of SNK fighters, and we are now 14 official entries in. It started back in 94. There's a song that starts that way, by the way. The King of Fighters 98 intro, it's totally worth listening to. Uh, anyhow, I'm a big fan. You can probably tell that I'm a big fan. I mean, I've got all of them. Those are the original arcade versions of the game. That is a Neo Geo MVS. <clears throat> I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> In fact, if I didn't spend so much time on Dragon Quest, I might spend more time on SNK, especially the fighting games. Anyhow, um... So Destiny is out now. It's a web series. It was developed in China because um, SNK's new parent company is Chinese. They're actually, they are a meatpacking plant that purchased SNK a couple of years ago. And it was actually some of the best news that's ever happened to that company because SNK is one of those companies that had kind of fallen into the let's do pachinko, let's do mobile all of our fans are now unhappy, but we're making money more regularly, um, companies. And then this Chinese company, which, <clears throat> to understand why this happened, you have to understand the absurd popularity that King of Fighters has in Japan. Absurd level of popularity. There was a live-streamed um, King of Fighters 97 tournament in China. And it brought in like 10 to 20 times as many views as Evo did. It's a big freaking deal in China. And also Brazil. I know I have a couple of viewers in Brazil. You, you probably SNK fans. I'm making an assumption based on a stereotype, but tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Anyways... Chinese company bought them up and said, we're going to start making games again. And the crowd like half rejoiced because on the one hand, yay, we're getting proper games again. On the other hand, this is a meatpacking company? <laughs> that was the dog. <clears throat> there, there was a lot of nervousness. And then when the King of Fighters 14 trailer came out, there was a lot of, because it looked terrible. Terrible. Like, graphically, it looked terrible. It is definitely not the best-looking game on the PS4. It would be hard-pressed to be best-looking game on a PS3, if I'm being fair. But the soul is there, it plays really well, and since the release, it's gotten a couple of graphical upgrades and adjustments, so it looks a lot better. I can't say the same for this anime. Anime? china -may? Chinese 3D animation. It's all computer generated, which I understand because that's actually it's cheaper. And SNK isn't exactly like rolling in the money right now. But uh, 14 has been successful. And hey, if, if you have a PS4 or if you have Steam, it's on Steam now. Also, check out KOF 14. It's an excellent, excellent game. One of my favorite in the franchise now. 
I don't know who she thinks she's playing with, but she's going crazy. Kona, come here. Come here. You want to say hi to everybody? Come here. Come here. Look. 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 No, 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 no. She's camera shy. <clears throat> One of the problems with the KOF series, though, is that since it took a bunch of different SNK titles that happen in different times, we've never really gotten a proper canon timeline for uh, the King of Fighters franchise. Because there's a lot of like major inconsistencies. First of all, the Art of Fighting games take place like at least 10 years before the Fatal Fury games, and then like the Athena games just happen all over the freaking place. Uh, Fatal Fury has a hard time keeping its own timeline straight. <clears throat> so we've always just been told that King of Fighters has a separate timeline. That's just, it's not part of the other timelines. Well, what Destiny does is we're finally getting an actual story for the first tournament and the events leading up to it. And it's tying those events together with the 1992 Fatal Fury of the King of Fighters, the first Fatal Fury game, which I can still 1cc like it's nobody's business. In fact, I think I have a video, an old video on this channel of me doing it. So that's really cool. And as an SNK fan, I'm really enjoying it, despite how bad it is. It's kind of like going back and watching Power Rangers. Because you watch it and you're like, this is... It's not good. <laughs> but there's still a lot of charm in it. And you can tell that the people who, make it, who are making it do like the franchise. And it's probably been the most accurate uh, storytelling for an SNK title or an SNK franchise. Because uh, it's not the first time that we've got some gotten something like this. Back in the 90s, we had an Art of Fighting. Uh, I think it was just an OVA. There were three Fatal Fury movies. Um, the first two are... They're not great. The third one's actually kind of okay. Like, by 90s anime standards, it's completely watchable. Uh, that one's called Fatal Fury, the motion picture, if you ever want to check it out. Uh, what else? I think Samurai Showdown, Samurai Spirits in Japan and probably the UK, got an anime. So it's not the first time that we've gotten some alternate media. There, there's also a new manga that's going now. And they're all doing a much better job with the storytelling. Unfortunately, it just it suffers so much from production quality issues. The character models look so bad. So bad. I didn't think that they would be able to release something with worse looking character models than what they initially showed for King of Fighters 14, but they have done it. The worst part is, it looks like they put more work into this, <laughs> and they just didn't do a good job. So all the characters look like these horrible plastic dolls. The facial animations are just, they're stiff. Um, they've turned some of the characters into joke characters, and I really don't think they should be. Uh, Benny Maru, for instance. Benny Maru's not a joke character, guys, and yet they turned him into just like this goofball I get it. He's he's a model. He's eccentric. He's a ladies' man. He's trying to bring back the male midriff shirt. I get it. He, he may not resonate completely with everybody, but he's never really been shown to be a gag character. And it seems like they've written him to be like Dan from Street Fighter. Anyhow, that's that's my rant. There's three episodes in now. It uh, it appears to be a weekly series. Comes out. It's free on YouTube through SNK's channel. Uh, you can also watch it on Steam Video for free. If you like KOF or if you're curious about the story in KOF, you could do worse because it is hitting the important 
plot points. And they're even using some of the plot points from previous attempts to tell the SNK fighter story. Um, the, the woman that Terry was in love with from the first Fatal Fury movie, OVA thing, it's not really, it's like 45 minutes long. Uh, Lily, that, she's in this, but her name has been changed to Angelina, which I understand, because now Billy Kahn, um, Geese's adopted uh, son, has a sister, a canon sister in the franchise named Lily Kahn. Um, I think she's only been playable in like one game, but she's shown up in several of them. And I think that they wanted to avoid that confusion. So they changed Lily from the original OVA into Angelina. She's blonde now. She doesn't have the blue hair. Terry's rocking some brown hair now, which would make cosplaying him easier. I've always wanted to do a Terry cosplay. I love Terry Bogard. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the KOF Destiny stuff. I'm going to check that off the list because that is something that I wanted to talk about. I decided to make this life list because after last week, I realized I have a tendency to ramble. And apparently, when vlogging, uh, finishing a complete thought is difficult for me. So, next up, Path of Exile. Path of Exile is a free game. It is on Steam. You don't even have to use Steam, so if you don't like Steam, you can just go to the Path of Exile website and get their launcher. It's free. It's excellent. It is Diablo 2.5. <clears throat> if you are a fan of the hack and slash roguelike, um, check out Path of Exile. I've been playing it lately. Uh, it recently had a massive patch. They more than doubled the size of the game without charging anybody for it. The game used to be four acts long. It is now ten. And I've been playing them, and they have not been short acts. Also, the difficulty level has just gone whoop! Um, which is also surprising. Uh, it, you, can, you can see right there. It's Diablo 3. No, no, it is. I've been a Diablo fan since the first one. I love, 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 love the first Diablo. It's in my top ten list of games. Not just RPGs, but games. I sunk so much time into the original Diablo. And even though everyone kind of remembers Diablo 2 as being this amazing thing, I was not actually a fan of Diablo 2. I didn't care for it. I think that they got the pacing wrong. They were trying to turn it into... It felt like they were trying to turn it into this frenetic action game, more like Gauntlet, and they gave up the pacing of the first game, and they gave up... I don't want to say the atmosphere, because the atmosphere was still there, but because the pacing was off, you couldn't really absorb the atmosphere. The first game's pacing was very slow. So you had time to drink in this atmosphere, and the sound design was really good, and there was echoing footsteps in this dungeon. It was just one singular long dungeon in the original game. It was only like 20 floors deep. <clears throat> um, and then Diablo 2 came out, and it had acts. They separated the game into chapters, and there was a lot of overworld stuff, and you'd run around and you'd find smaller dungeons, nothing that really met up with the massive dungeon from Diablo 1, and a lot of people love it. Diablo 2 is on so many top 10 lists, it is it's shocking. It is still played at LAN parties today. I just couldn't get into it. Diablo 3 came out. Um, people are still bad about that. <laughs> uh, I, I was playing Diablo 3 again recently. The Necromancer came out. I think that Diablo 3 actually does some things a lot better than Diablo 2. Uh, the gameplay, in particular, I think is better. Unfortunately, it falls flat like everywhere else. <clears throat> and it's too easy. Diablo 3 is way, 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 way stinking easy. And because there's not a lot of content in it, you fly through it. And then all you can really do is just keep increasing the difficulty level. And there's a problem when 
the biggest draw of your game is do a random dungeon until you can increase the difficulty level. And I got up to like Greater Rift 60, I think. And then I was like, I'm going to try Path of Exile. And that one's been a real treat. It's been much more challenging. The pacing is perfect. The atmosphere is perfect. They combined the best parts of Diablo 1, the best parts of Diablo 2. Then they improved on the problems that Diablo 2 has. Instead of having a skill tree, you have a passive bonus tree, which works better. It is massive and terrifying to look at the first time. You'll get sphere, grids fla sphere grid flashbacks, but upon proper investigation, it actually makes sense and it's very easy to, to understand. All points, a hell of a lot easier than you could in two. Not as easy as you can in three, but a hell of a lot easier than you can in two. Um, <clears throat> and it makes more builds viable. Uh, I think you could come up with just about any kind of build in Path of Exile and make it viable. may not be top, but you'd be able to play through the game and beat it. I think. I still haven't finished the game, but I haven't been horribly walled by anything like <clears throat> Duriel at the end of Act 2 in Diablo. Diablo 2 is just freaking brutal about it. If you didn't have the right build, you weren't going to beat the game. Not good design. The Path of Exile has been fantastic. <clears throat> it's free. I've been playing it. We got a bunch of people in the Discord, which I will link to the Discord, Discord below. We got several people in Discord playing it. We are doing a uh, softcore Harbinger League. Um, Harbinger League is just its the current league that's going on. They kind of mix things up with the leagues. It's not just a, a seasonal character type thing. They bring in other things to the game, uh, and this time around it's Harbingers. They're super monsters that occasionally show up and they spawn in packs of other monsters and they're invincible for periods of time, but they drop stuff. <clears throat> and that's been fun. The, the point that I'm trying to get to here is that I would like to change one of my stream days to being a community stream day. Um, this is something that's going to happen out when Monster Hunter World comes out anyways. But for a community stream day, it's going to be sometime during the week, because weekends are about the kids. Uh, and instead of doing whatever current game I'm working on, like right now I'm working on Dragon Quest XI, I would spend that, you know, five-hour window that I stream within, <clears throat> where I'm not editing videos or studying Japanese, um, I would just spend that streaming and it would be open to people of an appropriate level joining. Uh, and I'd probably just continue on with the Harbinger League, like where we are now. Um, I'm at the end of... No, no, I'm at the beginning of Act 3. Lady Aura and I got to Act 3 last night. And I would like to just switch over to doing one of the days a week, being a community stream. Parties are up to like six people. We're in Act 3 now. I want to say Fridays would be best for this, but I'll think on it. I'll do an announcement when it's time. But yeah, if you would like to join us, I've got a Discord. We can do some Path of Exile together. It'll be fun. Uh, I think that one of the best parts about Let's Playing and streaming and YouTube and everything is getting to interact with other people. And being able to play with other people is fun, too. We had a lot of fun with Monster Hunter back in the day. Had a lot of fun with Torchlight 2. Uh, and it's just, it's been a long time, and I think it's time to do another multiplayer weekly event type thing. Um, so that's Path of Exile. Check it out. If you have any questions, we have got a, a growing knowledge base in the Discord. We're all still pretty new to the game. Last, but not least, a couple of you like, did he forget? I did not forget. The Dragon Quest XI winner. Gaming Gumper, congratulations. I'll be sending you the download code for Dragon Quest XI on Patreon. You may need to set up a Japanese PSN account. There's guides for how to do that online. It's not terribly hard to do. And then, you know, you just... Put in the code and 
Do you have Dragon Quest XI to play? And if you have any questions, then you can bother me about it. Or Mel. Mel's in Discord. You can bother Mel about it, too. <laughs> Thanks, Mel! That's, uh, that's it. For the agenda, there are a couple of other things. Um, where I stand on Patreon right now, it has been just shy of a month since I lost my job. My Patreon grew by leaps and bounds. Twitch has grown, YouTube has grown. I suspect a large deal of that is due to Dragon Quest XI. To those of you who are new to the channel, hello and welcome. <clears throat> we are two weeks out from the end of the month, and 190... No, 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 not 190. $104? $104 a month shy of my August goal for Patreon. If you're new to the channel... Patreon is the most reliable way for a creator to have an income. <clears throat> In order to make sure that I'm hitting the income needed to do this as a full-time job, I have a couple of timed goals on my Patreon page. And the first one, if we can hit it with $500 a month on Patreon before the end of August, I will do a marathon of... Earthbound in September. We are $104 shy. We have two weeks to do it in. I think we can do it. I think. I have my fingers crossed. We, there was, there's a lot of growth right when I lost my job and then Dragon Quest XI came out and it was really good timing, but we've slowed down since then. Um, the, the final goal is to be hitting $1,500 a month before the end of August. If I'm not hitting that, then I'm going to have to find another job, which will slow down the amount of content that I'm able to create. And I have a growing list of games that people would like me to play, people that have uh, patroned for me to play. We got um, Nanakemia, Advanced Wars, Final Fantasy XII, Dream Daddy, Nier... Dragon Age, a uh, couple of Mega Ten games, Suikoden 1 and 2. There's, there's a bunch of games that I would like to get to, and it'll be faster and easier for me to get to the games that everybody is looking forward to, as well as um, new games, if we hit that goal. So, um, if you're interested in seeing me Let's Play something, please check out my Patreon page. Uh, if you just want to support the channel, every little bit helps, and thank you to those who have, you know, uh, donated and pledged to support me on a monthly basis. I super appreciate it. The Twitch, stuff's, the Twitch stuff helps too. Twitch isn't as consistent as Patreon, though, because you have to resubscribe every month, <clears throat> and that's not an automatic thing, so it's a lot easier to forget to do. Uh, YouTube ad revenue is just, it's all over the freaking place. And you guys, you, a lot of you, I'm sure, watch YouTube videos and you've heard about the constant changes to uh, monetization issues from other YouTubers. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a constant struggle keeping up with what YouTube expects and what advertisers expect. And I don't expect that I'm, I, I just can't qualify YouTube ad revenue as reliable income. Um, I think the most number of views that I've ever done in a month was back when Dragon Quest VII came out for the uh, 3DS. I did 100,000 views that month, which only translated into like $200 of ad revenue. So it's not great money on YouTube. Giveaway will be... I think we'll do the monthly giveaways on the final Friday of each month. So next week is the 25th. The week after that is the 1st. So I think we'll do the uh, the Dragon Quest swag giveaway thing um, next week. I wanted to say something else, and I can't remember what it is because I didn't freaking write it down because I just wrote down the important things. I guess I'm done for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I will see you guys later today for some Dragon Quest XI. Peace out.